Good evening and a very, very warm welcome to you wherever you may be. Thank you for joining us here on the Geelong Region Soccer Show. It is going to be an absolute perler of an episode tonight. And um, we are looking forward to uh, being with you over the next oh, 60 minutes, maybe even longer. My name is Tonchi Prusak and it's a very warm welcome to Steve Curtin. Steve, how are you tonight? <laughs> Yeah, a little bit weary, actually, Tonchi. There's been a lot going on of late. We've been, uh, last week, we've been over to Adelaide doing a bit of band manager duties for Hooper Crescent, then back from the Governor Hindmarsh stage over there. Then uh, the cross country club's been kicking off oh the last couple gosh. of weeks. So we've been run off our legs with that. So uh, that's another great activity if you're retired from football and want to keep fit, of course. Uh, yeah, big weekend for me and Kate, but we'll, you know, we'll come to that at a, at a later point as well, no doubt. But, uh, but Tonchi, there's been a bit happening in the in the local newspapers this week, and the the local clubs have uh, really pulled together. And this is a long time. We've been waiting a long time for this, haven't we? But we have indeed. The we coverage indeed. is back in the Geelong Advertiser for local football, and there it is. There, isn't that good to see that finally we are back in the Geelong Advertiser? And yeah, we've had to we wait belong, a while. Getting and that fl- publicity, big participation sport in Geelong, and that's where we should be there, getting that coverage. And what a great picture that is too. Yeah, actually, we'll put that picture back on there, isn't it? That's a, almost a full page spread there. You could almost say, um, 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 minus that Kids Day Out article there, um, advert down the bottom. But yeah, it has been a long time coming. And look, kudos to all the Geelong region clubs. I'm told they did band together. Um, they and they've um, actually because uh, they've approached the advertising series of meetings later, and and it looks like it has eventuated. So. Um, it looks like there's going to be regular coverage in the Geelong Advertiser. Um, that's, a, that's a good thing because um, our sport needs the coverage. It needs all the coverage. And I don't know about you, Steve. Oh, I look, I'm, I'm kind of black and blue of, um, and, 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 you know, almost sick of, of trying to push, you know, that, that the clubs themselves, yep. um, Football Victoria as well, they have to really take the, um, the, the, the um, proactive approach yeah, and to really publicise, yeah, absolutely, and publicise um, um, everything. And, and look, um, for some reason, we've got some sort of an issue or something like that with the Geelong page, I believe. Uh, it's just not coming on. Is that right? Um, let's, for, uh, let's, well, let's see if we can remedy that. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully, if you can't view us on the Geelong page, or I presume you must be viewing us on the Football Out West page instead. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Mm. Look, I, we're, we're trying to do our best. But, um, yeah, Steve, mate, you're also involved in another element of, of, of local um, media, if you like. Tell us a little bit about that as well. Yeah, yeah. Every week for the last uh, two seasons, uh, last year and this year, we've been doing a little piece. And shout out to Kevin Hillier at uh, at, at Bay FM for um, having us on his show, The Sideline View, which is a, a great local community sports show that's on uh, Bay FM every Saturday afternoon, one till five. So you can tune in, uh, and it does feature a lot of music tracks as well, of course. But in between, he has interviews with some very famous. Uh, athletes, coaches, and, and me as well, uh, to talk about local football. So that's at 2.30 every every Saturday afternoon on Bay 93.9. So make sure you uh, yeah tune in and it's just another sort of little outlet that we can push our uh, our game and get a bit of coverage so that the that just the common man who's out at the car wash that's got Bay FM pumping will hear us talking about local football and that we get a bit of publicity. So we, every weekend we've got like a big local derby happening in Geelong every Saturday afternoon and we need to, uh, you know, promote those things. Not only that, but also our local league and mm-hmm. our master's leagues and our junior leagues and uh, right up to the elite level. So yeah, the more talk about it, the better. And, and you know, when you see things as well, like uh, Morshead Park in Ballarat, that great facility, getting an A-league oh, match uh, yeah. on Saturday and uh, – you know that pitch looked excellent from from all reports, and uh, you know that could be us and should be us here in Geelong getting those matches. But but we're still not because we we need to keep uh, pushing our burrow to make sure that these things these things will happen, mate. Now, how are we going with that stream? Are we having any luck? Well, it looks we? like we yeah, it looks like we're back on the Geelong Region Soccer uh, uh, News Facebook page. So if you are if you are tuning in through that, um, the welcome tonight to tonight's show. Thank you to Santino Mamone. He is like the patron saint of this show. He um he told us uh, uh that we weren't coming on and there was a little probably a small slight hiccup and that is obviously our home page our main page we are the Geelong Region Soccer Show in fact it is now up to um episode oh, what are we up to episode seventy um seventy eight geez we're 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 firing along it's all like we're moving we're on the race to hundred yeah oh, mate, I tell you what, 
It's absolutely <laughs> incredible, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, uh, mate, uh, guests tonight as well. We've got a heap of guests. We've got some ripper yeah. guests. Who have we got, got on the show tonight, mate? Yeah, so tonight's show, we will mention the sponsor of the show at the same time, shall we, as well? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so Core for Coaching, our sponsor of tonight's show, and that means that we get two fantastic guests. There we go, former A-League champion Adrian Leia from the Melbourne Victory, or formerly of the Melbourne Victory, should I say, who's now heavily involved with Core for Coaching. He'll be joining us after the news segment, and then followed by a current uh, A-League player at Western United, their star midfielder, Steve Lustitz, will be joining us, so a couple of... Corva experts there and uh, Corva coaching is a fantastic program and I remember having uh, my brother and I had a, had a VHS of Corva coaching back in, yeah. in the in the 90s and I had some of the great action from the the best of the best from the 70s and 80s on the video and then applying it into the techniques and it has some very quotable quotes on there as it starts from a little techniques with the outside of the foot twist offs and those sort of skills moving up to uh, the the aerial skills and uh, I think there's a quote in there that says the bicycle kick a difficult one which is um, very quotable in my house at the moment still yeah absolutely so look that is going to be huge we've got a massive massive show on tonight folks um, do not go away we're going to take a commercial break when we return it's going to be the news desk we'll be looking at all the results that happened over the weekend paying particular emphasis on the NPL junior boys because uh, they have finished their first phase or their qualifying phase if you like and they have now been they will now be split into division one division two division three division four we'll also got a little bit on the um, galaxy united junior girls as well so heaps coming up tonight folks don't go away we're going to have a very very short commercial break when we return it is the news desk you're tuning into the geelong region soccer show the world is yours so work hard and you can have whatever it is you want. Pause always gets me. Let's jump yeah, into it the news. <laughs> <laughs> it's like one of those tracks when you're a radio DJ that you think they're finished and they come back again. Um, let's jump into those uh, results from the weekend. We'll start with the NPL 2 match at Alco Park and a win for North Geelong. Seven goals, 2-1 over the Golden Valley Suns. A hat-trick for Caleb Mikulic, who uh, Caleb can't stop scoring at the moment. Also goals for Noah Skoko, Luka Jurkovic, George Ellis, Lockie McGrath as well. So uh, a bit of a goal fest there for, for North Geelong. And uh, we also got a good result for uh, for Geelong as well. Geelong Soccer Club on the road. Kamisi scoring in the 78th minute to uh, get the win over Nunna Warning City. So wins for both of our NPL sides in the men's. That's uh, good news there. And uh, what we touch league. on... Oh, sorry. Yeah, you go. We'll, we'll go through the uh, we'll go through the results, and then we'll go back and, and double back on the ladder and the ladder positions. Yeah. Men's State yeah. League One, unfortunately for Karaya Soccer Club, uh, they took a one 0 lead through Darcy Rapper, and then Keylor Park scored two late goals to take all three points there in um, in Keylor in um, State League Two Men's um, Northwest Division. Uh, Geelong Rangers, despite scoring through Carlin Carlin, Carlin McCluskey, apologies there. Um, weren't able to uh, come home with the points against Upfield. So the score there was uh, 2-1 for, yep. for the Rangers. Moving along now to State League 4, Steve. Yeah, let's go to State 4. So Bell Park getting their second win in a row, 2-1 over Barnstone Worth United with Nick Ballas and Alton Savis finding the back of the net. And it was a thriller out at Bannockburn. Golden Plains end, end up going down one goal to two to the visiting Surf Coast after Mute had scored four Golden Plains to give them some hope, an own goal, and then a 91st-minute goal to Tom Langman. 
And what do we say? When you go on the sh- on the Geelong Region Soccer Show, you end up, you do. up scoring scoring that week. And uh, Tom's done just that. And well done to him on his injury time winner to give Surf Coast maximum points for the yeah, well, our, third our time guest, out of four this season. One of our guests tonight, Stephen Lustitzer uh, for Western United, he actually scored on the weekend just gone by. And uh, let's see if he can now score in his next match. So that'll be interesting <laughs> to see. But... Uh, Tom Tom Langman. For those of you folks that missed out last week's show, great interview with Tom Langman. Um, he he missed the previous week's um, derby against uh, Bell Park. Uh, Surf Coast lost that game two nil, and Tom Lang Tom was up in Sydney. Um, he was involved in a show for cancer, so uh, um, raising money to for cancer research, and he's been motivated because it's a cause close to his heart, close to home, because his sister at the age of 30 was diagnosed with a, a form of leukemia. Um, so if you missed that show, go onto our YouTube channel, Geelong Region Soccer Show, and you'll be able to catch up with that particular uh, interview. But uh, moving along then to State 5, Steve, the we call it the de, de facto Geelong Region um, Division, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, yeah, we do. So there was uh, not a lot of luck for the Deacon Ducks. They went down 3-0 at Melton Phoenix, while uh, Barwon got a win on the road 2-1 over West Point. So two, another two goals to Milton Bailey, who's another player that just keeps on knocking in the goals, and he likes to score a double. He seems to be getting two goals a week. Mm. Uh, so good on uh, good on everyone down at Barwon. Lara United, also good news there. 3-1 over Maribyrn on Greens. Lockie Lazarich with a double and Tristan McGrath. While for Surfside Waves, they had a difficult day with the visiting Bendigo City, winning five goals to one with Josh Kuipers getting the Waves on the scoreboard. It was their first goal of the season and it has taken four rounds for, for Surfside to get on the scorer's sheet. Um, but uh, yeah, Josh Kuipers having the... Uh, the um the uh, honor there and then finally on sunday we had the victorian premier league women's round two galaxy united continue their 100 percent winning start to the season another high scoring affair another thriller mm. and this time 4-3 over casey comets goals by eri yamashita to uh katie higgum and C- captain emily sutcliffe now next week um the the men's NPL and the men's state league will be in action this Easter weekend, mm. but the ladies will be taking a break. And the next time the Galaxy will be involved in a league fixture will be on Sunday, April the 24th. And that will be um, a round three fixture at Tarara Park in Melbourne when they come up against uh, Whitehorse United, Steve. And I do believe that um, a Whitehorse United was on the wrong end of an 8 nil thrashing um, at the hands of Ladder leaders Preston. So, uh, um, yeah. well, well, they had a know, good side, White Horse, uh, last season. So, yeah, the, the, either Preston's going very well or White Horse have dropped a bit. And also, with those high scoring thrillers that Geelong Galaxy are having, the good news is that Football Victoria should be beginning a service to stream those matches each weekend. So yes. We're waiting for the uh, like. I mean, we've had somewhat confirmation that this is taking place, but we're waiting for the official word and uh, in, to be put in the roster. And uh, yeah, looking forward to hopefully covering some of those matches, especially if they keep having wins to the tune of five four and four three. Because yeah. uh, if if we get to go and call those games, it's going to be a lot of fun. Oh, that's that's going to be awesome. I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, I had the pleasure of calling a lot of Galaxy's games um, freelancing last year. Um, but this year, obviously, um, they're going to be involved in a um, – yeah, like th- this year it's, it's going to be more of a it's, – it's part of that – what do they call it? The NPL TV or the Clutch TV platform. Yep, the uh, NPL.TV. So, so download yeah. that app if you haven't got it as well because uh, yep. we, we, we'll we show you the fixture in a moment, but uh, Geelong Soccer Club will be streamed on NPL.TV this Saturday evening, so get to the ground. But if you can't get to the ground, you've got an option to watch it uh, at home. You can cast that onto your yeah. smart TV or through your – Google Chrome from your mobile phone and watch that one on MPL.TV. So just get online on your phone and download that one right now if you haven't already. But we'll better move on because we've got guests waiting to uh, to come on and we've got the ladder there for the NPL 2, which sees North Geelong with two wins sitting in fourth place at the moment in the NPL 2. Yeah, they, they're doing really well. Um, speaking to a few people out at North Geelong, some of the coaching staff, Adrian Chaga, their assistant, uh, Stuart Begg, the um, head coach, and they said, look, the only loss this year has come at, um, at the hands of Northcote City in round one. And in that particular game, they just outplayed 
Northcote City. They just could not take, um, could not capitalise on their chances. That's something that they definitely did on on Saturday against Golden Valley Suns. And um, what they say in the advertiser was like the the Warriors overran uh, Goulburn in a total eclipse of the sun or something like that. <laughs> but um, yeah, a very look <laughs> North Geelong looked really good two weeks ago as as well against Moreland Zebras. Um, so really good, uh, looking good, looking the goods down there at Alco Park. Uh, yeah. NPL three ladder, Steve. Yeah, so we see Geelong in ninth place in the MPL three. They they are on six points though. They're just down a little bit on goal difference. So uh, yeah, they're, they're what are they only a point off uh, a much higher position now? The um, uh, sorry, the VPL women's we've got Geelong Galaxy two wins from two, which is great. Um, there's uh, three teams all on six points there. So also Preston Lions and South Yarra. So yep, six six points from two games doesn't get any better than that. No, absolutely not. Let's turn our attention now to the um, state leagues, and it's a bit mi- bit of a mixed bag for the Geelong clubs. Um, state League One. Yeah, Cryo, uh, they're sitting uh, not where they want to be with just the two points, um, picking up two points in their first two games before two losses. So they're, they're looking to turn that around uh, this uh, Easter weekend. The good thing is it's still early days yet. Geelong Reigns have got a very young side and, and they're in very much the same boat, although they've only um, managed to draw one and lose three of those games. So uh, the Rangers under coach Stephen Tillinger, they'll be looking to bounce back um, right from, from this weekend as well. We'll go through all the ladders, um, whip through the ladders, and then we'll go through the um, fixtures for this weekend. But um, the, the one that's that's interesting for us uh, being, um, well, we talk about mixed mixed divisions, mixed uh, um, mixed to uh, what's the word fortunes at the moment? Yeah, mixed Surf fortunes, Coast. Yeah. yeah, Surf Coast um, um, are, are really looking good. They're um, three wins and one loss, and that one loss was in that derby game against uh, Bell Park two weeks ago. So they've got nine points there. In Bell Park, yeah. who have uh, really done well in the last two weeks, they they started the season off poorly with two losses, but they've come good in the last two weeks, and they've got two wins from from the last two games. So they now occupy a mid-table position. The Golden Plains are struggling at the moment. The thing with Golden Plains is, and I was talking to their coach, Ryan Baldacino, um, on Saturday, and he did say, look, apart from himself, the coach, and there's one other player, all of the other players are under the age of 21. So it is a great learning experience for them. But having said that, they don't want to lose too many games um, particularly early on in the season, because um, we all know once it gets you, know, you get into that position, you get into that rut, and so, certainly as the winter months set in, it's always hard to carve yourself away from the bottom of the ladder. But uh, yeah, um, I think they're getting closer to a win. You know, like they they yeah. were so close to getting a point, and they missed out by a, a minute or two on getting a point against Surf Coast, which would have been a, a really good result. So I, yeah, I, I think they're getting closer, and they might get some confidence from. That. We need to look at state five now. Now this this doesn't take into very well. A, yeah, it doesn't take into account for whatever reason um, the last game Barwon and, and and West Point I think it was. Um, so Barwon are in fact twelve points. They are in fact four games, four, uh, four, four. wins, and they yeah. are on twelve points. Yeah. yeah, so that puts them in first place. And we've got at the other end, we've got Surfside yet to pick up any points. Um, and also Lara, they're sitting. In well, they they should be on four points now as well, right? Because they yeah, that one got that win well. on the weekend, which hasn't been counted on that ladder at the time. Yeah, so these uh, are that, the that was full... that was put together. So yeah, that puts them on four points. So they're they're healthily sitting mid table as uh, Deacon Ducks on uh, on six points with two wins out of four. Yeah, so just making a note, we we take these ladders from the Football Victoria um, website, and if the um, you know the results yeah. have not been updated by you know uh, the middle of Monday. Then um, unfortunately we don't have those um, those up to date ladders. Right. Steve, let's look at the fixtures for this weekend. A jam packed Easter weekend. Yeah, really good game coming up. Uh, Dunstan Reserve. We'll see Brunswick City hosting North Geelong. So that that should be a beauty. Brunswick City were a very good team. They were the runaway leader for a lot of that uh, last season and would have been promoted to the MPL one perhaps if the season hadn't been cancelled. So. Uh, Good luck to North in that adventure. They might be able to get the points, I think, still, though. Geelong, they're hosting Whittlesea Rangers, another home match at Stead Park. Six o'clock, that game will be on NPL TV or get to the ground if you can. I think Geelong can get the win over Whittlesea Rangers. And then uh, speaking of Whittlesea, Whittlesea United, they're coming to Hume Reserve on Saturday afternoon to play Corio. So a chance for Corio to get three points 
at the on their home turf. And then uh, moving into uh, State Two, Tonchi. Yeah, State Two. We've got uh, Geelong Rangers at home to Albion Rovers. Uh, that's at Myers Reserve at three pm. And then uh, we've got three big games in um, State League Four. Uh, highlighted by that Bell Park versus Gisborne clash. That's at the Bell Park Sports Club. That's a 3 p.m. kickoff. Golden Plains at home to Barnstoneworth United. That's at Bannockburn Re- Recreation Precinct at 3 p.m. But the big one, the undefeated Keylor yeah. Wolves versus um, our Surf Coast, who have three from four at the moment. That's at Green Gully Reserve. Now, is that, yeah. is that the main Green Gully Reserve? It's not It's not on the main pitch. It's, it's on, on uh, Keela Wolves have their own pitch that's around behind. But, uh, yeah, uh-huh. very difficult place to go. And uh, Surf Coast will really need to be on their game to try and uh, come away with something out of that game because uh, Keela Wolves, uh, they are a real success story at the moment in the, the state leagues. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, you've, you've, you went... You were you at Green Gully last week, were you? No, no, you were, you, you, you're a regular, though, Green Gully calling games at the NPL um, level, but uh, that's the main pitch, isn't it? Yeah. So yep. how many how many how many pitches do they have out there? Uh, there's at least there's at least three, but there may be four yeah. even for heading further north. But I'm often there doing night games, and you can't see too far into the darkness. But I have been there calling a game for Green Gully and NPL while the Keela Wolves have been playing a home game at the same time. And you can hear the roars as they're banging in the goals because they always seem to be scoring goals, the Keela Wolves. So yeah, yeah, it's funny having two games happening on adjoining pitches like that when you're doing a, a live broadcast. Now, we are intentionally, when we do put these things up, we are going to make little um, errors um, to see how, how asleep <laughs> our viewers are or not. And uh, Brenton Ray, correct, you're the first one. It, NPL Victoria 2 is not, in fact, round four. It is round five. We stand corrected. Thank you very much. And Tom Langman, the Surf Coast, Surf Coast um, captain, has actually said to us the Keelor versus Surf Coast game is on a Thursday night. Um, yeah. Not on the Saturday yeah. night. Right. Uh, definitely. On. Yeah, definitely. Some clubs have uh, jumped in to change their fixtures to avoid uh, having to play yeah. and let their players uh, go away for Easter, which is uh, you know pretty smart if if you can do it because obviously Absolutely. teams will be training Thursday night anyway, so the players yeah. will all be available. Um, it would make it a short week to prepare for the match, but a good change for the players given that this is the first year that we don't get a break for Easter in uh, in my memory. Yeah, uh, 8, 8, 8 p.m. Is it? Keela versus Surf Coast, 8 p.m., not 8.30 p.m. Either way, it's on Holy Friend Thursday. of the show, Tom. He's all over it. Yeah. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, that's that's awesome. That's That sounds fantastic. That is really, really good um, in, indeed. Uh, now, moving along to uh, Men's State League 5, round 5. We've got three matches there. We'll wait for the uh, the big one down the bottom. But Deacon Ducks yeah. at home to West Point. They've had a real yo-yo kind of a season, the Ducks. They've got their game against the West Point at 3 p.m. at Deakin University at the Warren Ponds campus there. Barwon at home to Balmoral. Balmoral um, that's at Grovedale Reserve at 3 p.m. A must-win game for Barwon. They've got four from four. But isn't it funny? When we're, we're saying they've won four from four, but now they're, they're faced with a must-win game because <laughs> if they want to keep that sort of top spot and, and almost try and break away from the pack, they just have to keep on winning their games at the moment, Steve. That's correct. So we'll see what they can do. And shall we move on? We better move on as well. Their final game of uh, oh, look at this one, La- yeah. it's a local derby, Lara Ooh. United and Surfside Wave. So there's a little bit of distance between these two clubs geographically, but there's real bragging rights to be had and uh, and points need to be obtained by both of these sides. So yeah. um, particularly and- Surfside. So, yep, good luck to both teams. And I, I bet that game's a beauty. And if you're in the area, get along for a look. Yeah, that should be fantastic. We're going to take a really, really quick break, a very, just a very, very short break. When we return, it's time to look at the juniors because there's a lot happening in the in the area of the NPL juniors. It's football. It's, it's the Geelong Region Soccer Show. Don't go away. That's right, the football that we show. What a ripper football that we show it was yesterday, last night, Steve. We um, had the George Cross um, um, themed club in focus in the early part, and then afterwards, a really, really good interview with a true living legend, 
um, and one of six inductees into the 2022 Football Victoria Hall of Fame, Gary Cole, a great friend of the show. And that was a, a, a fantastic uh, interview that was. And, uh, um, mate, now yeah. turning our attention to local matters, the juniors, uh, let's look at, first of all, it's the, uh, the uh, NPL boys under 14 juniors. And that's the final ladder positions after the 11 qualifying round. So if you're not familiar with how, how this works, um, there are four zones, uh, north, south, east and west, 12 teams in each zone, and each team plays each other once. And at the end of this qualifying round, the top three go into Division 1, the next three go into Division 2, the three thereafter go into Division 3, and then the bottom three go into Division 4 of the season proper. So there will obviously be 12 teams um, in each division, and there will be 20, 22 rounds. So... The first week after Easter is when the actual um, uh, NPL Junior uh, Boys season commences. Uh, look at North Geelong. Um, 11 games, 11 wins, a, a goal difference of plus 60. Undisputed champions of the Western Zone. Um, obviously, they're in Division 1. The other Geelong team, Geelong, um, they finished in ninth position. So they um, have snuck into Division 3. And remembering it is a developmental phase. So you're going to be playing teams week in, week out that are kind of your um, your ability or your, your level. And so when they move into the competition, no game is easy. It's always going to be a very, very tough game um, when you're in the, in the competition proper. But uh, Steve, very impressive from North Geelong there. Yeah, well done to everyone involved. They've done very well. Moving along to the um, 15, Steve, take us through that. Yeah, so looking at the 15s there, again, North Geelong doing well. They got uh, the second spot there, 25 points uh, from their 11 games. So a good performance. Geelong as well, they finished up in seventh uh, seventh place with uh, 16 points. So a mid-table finish there. So, yeah, well done to everyone involved at those two uh, junior NPL sides. So once again, North Geelong qualify for Division 1. Um, Geelong will qualify for Division 3. Um, and then we've got the under-16, Steve. Uh, yeah, under-16s, North Geelong yet also second place again. It feels like on repeat yeah. here. Uh, Geelong yeah. finished a bit lower. They finished in 11th place there, so they're in, in the lower placings for that uh, particular age group. So once again, North Geelong in Division 1. So um, an incredible achievement by the North Geelong junior um, section of the club there. Once again, they're in Division 3. Geelong find themselves in Division 4 in the under-16 category. Um, and finally, we've got the under-18s. Yeah, so North Geelong in fifth place in the under-18s and uh, Geelong finishing in uh, ninth place. So uh, there you go. So that'll put them into the, what, the second and the fourth uh, pots, respectively. Seth, second and fourth, yeah. Um, turning our attention now to the Galaxy Juniors. We can't, we can't neglect the girls there as well. Um, two out of three ain't bad, they, um, they say. So uh, coming up against Alamein FC, uh, these were the results um, in the under-13s. It was a, a nil-two win to two Galaxy. In the under-15s, it was a one-two win to Galaxy, or two-one win, however you want to look at it. And then the under-17s, it was a, a nil-one loss. So um, good effort against a club that is, you know, an NPLW club. So... Let's face it, that's always going to be a tough, tough ask, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Alamein's a very good setup. They've got a good senior side so uh, in the MPLW. So, yeah, difficult opposition and uh, an imposing logo with that train at the top of the logo as well. Yeah. Now, there's a photo there. At the end, there's a photo there of um, the Surf Coast boys. And uh, what a wonderful story that was. Um, and there's um, um, Tom Langman there's Tom, right yep. in, the, in the middle of the picture at the top there. Um, leading the team in the in the um, club song after last weekend's game, but an inspirational performance that that really deserves. I think that the the BOG this weekend that was a that was a great effort coming back after a week's absence uh, to lead his side to obviously it was a it was a, a gritty um, tough um, uh, result. Um, it was a scrappy game, I'm told, uh, but nonetheless, uh, Surf Coast managed to jump back onto the winner's list, and uh, Tom, Tom Langman, Captain Courageous, was the one who 
managed to uh, score the match winner in the, uh, what did you say, the 90, 91st, 91st minute or According to Sports like TG, 91st yeah. minute. So, yeah, if that's accurate, that's uh, that would have been a, a bit of a sensational moment for Tom and the, and the Surf Coast lads. Yeah, a pretty, pretty good effort. All right, mate. Well, we're going to take a bit of a break. And when we return, it's, it's time for our first guest. Yep. We'll be talking to former Melbourne Victory defender and ex Socceroo, And he's now uh, the director and head coach of the Curva Coaching in Geelong. And he'll be talking to us a little bit about his career and also life after football and what he's involved in at, uh, right now. Folks, don't go away. You're tuning into the Geelong Region Soccer Show. It is episode 78, and a big shout-out to our sponsor for this episode, our episode sponsor, Curva Coaching Geelong. The world is yours. So work hard, and you can have whatever it is you want. Well, welcome back to the Geelong Region Soccer Show. It's episode 78, episode 6 of season 4. Wow, the, 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 the episodes are just slipping by. And um, Steve, it's a great pleasure to introduce us to uh, our guest this week, um, former Melbourne Victory defender, ex Socceroo, and, well, we'll count him as one of our own, a Geelong boy, Adrian oh, Leia. Definitely. Great to have you on the show. How are you? Good evening, gents. I'm well. How are you guys? Oh, absolutely yeah. fantastic, fantastic, mate. Absolutely fantastic. And what about yourself? Loving life down on the surf coast? I am. I am. I'm, uh, <laughs> I've slotted right back into the Janjak life, enjoying the, uh, the salt water. But I'm, as we speak, I'm actually in Canberra up here for the uh, Matildas versus New Zealand games. So uh, a couple of days away. Oh, it couldn't, couldn't be any more different to uh, Torquay. Couldn't be. Actually, I was down Torquay way <laughs> yesterday. It was absolutely beautiful. It was really warm. And then today was a little bit cold on the training track, but no doubt... Um, you're pretty rugged up up there in um, in Canberra, although indoors you'd be fine. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, it's not too bad. It's actually been nice out there today, and uh, as you said, a lovely weekend in Torquay. And uh, yeah, I, I sort of I don't mind it when it starts getting a bit colder because the waves start coming, and, and hopefully they do get some good ones for the uh, Ripfield Pro. Well, they say yeah, uh, you, know, exactly. you know you're a Victorian because all you do is you start every conversation with the weather, and we indeed have started with the weather. But let's talk about more important <laughs> things. <laughs> more important things. Let's talk about football. As Bill Shankly said, football is not a matter of life or death. It's more important than that. But, um, uh, Ada, let's talk about your career, first of all. Um, and, and you came to Geelong. Um, you actually weren't born in Geelong. Um, you are born in New South Wales, but then you moved, your family moved to Geelong. Tell us about, you know, going back right to the start, um, how did you get involved in playing football um, and not, say, rugby or AFL or anything like that, but the real football? And, uh, and, 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 and what sort of, what were those main influences in your life early in the piece? Yeah, so, I mean, I grew up in Dubbo in the country in New South Wales, so uh, it was either rugby league or, or the real football, as you call it. Um, <laughs> and... So I think the the choice was pretty obvious from that point. Um, my mum, my mum is born and bred English. My dad is born and bred Dutch. So it's uh, it is in the blood. And um, my my dad was actually coaching my brother's under six team. And I think I annoyed uh, the pair of them enough to to you know get out there and have a run around. So <laughs> I suppose you know looking back, I probably played most of my football up um, with my brother and his mates, and and that probably helped me. Um, mm in the long run with my development and you know once I got to rep football it was almost you know that's probably why I got thrown in the back earlier because I was kind of bigger and been used to playing around with the bigger boys so um look I had a, I had a great um upbringing in Dubbo it was it was all about you know sport 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 do as much as you can and I played every sport but um football was the one that I suppose I stuck with and and I had a unfortunately I did 
And uh, as a young uh, teenager, you went on to do pretty well getting into the VIS and then debuting at the uh, Melbourne Knights at a young age. But uh, what are your memories from those sort of teenage years of playing football and coming through the ranks and, uh, and, and playing maybe a few games in Geelong before that happened as well? Yeah, um, as you can see there, those photos are probably my <laughs> debut, maybe. Um, yeah. I think I, think I was uh, I, oh, I a remember was there. 75 kilos um, making my debut there. And I, I remember I played against Joe Spateri in my first game. And, you know, for me, it was it, it was, a, it was a big, big moment. Um, and, you know, it, it had been a lot of sacrifice and hard work growing up and a lot of time in the car and, um, you know, up and down the freeway from Geelong to Melbourne once we moved down. And, um, yeah. you know, those those things you never forget and especially your debut and, and that was a, a time in my life which you know i i absolutely love my time at melbourne knights it was um it was just an incredible environment i loved the the culture and the history of that club and, and the the players that had been through that club and although i was only there for 12 months um when i retired it was probably one of my fondest memories so um look i, I had a i had a fortunate career but you know starting out as a 17 year old in the nsl was a, it was a pretty good introduction to the game and a good introduction in terms of being the youngest in the dressing room and uh being taught a few lessons and yeah, you quickly then moved on to to melbourne victory the uh so the nsl um finished up and then there was a bit of a, a break there and then um i think in 2005 was it that that the a league started you were right there from the outset with uh, melbourne victory had a few of the melbourne knights players come over from the knights roddy vargas was one that i can remember um, mate, tell us what what was it like then being involved in a in a in a competition that was absolutely brand new. That was you know um, there was so much being built, so much excitement. It was um, it was you know it was part of the mainstream. What were you, what what was your recollections of of those experiences in those first few years of the A League? Yeah, it was actually it was actually quite scary to be honest. Um, you know, I'd, I'd made my mark in the NSL and and I went to Knights because. I thought I'd get more game time and ended up playing 21 games or something like that. And um, then the league paused for a really long period and we had under 20s mm -hmm. matches and we just weren't fit. We didn't we didn't have the training. We missed a really big chunk of football um, and really didn't know what to expect. But, you know, then you, you sort of fast forward and, and you look at Olympic Park and the first couple of games there were sellouts and, you know, I think by about round eight or nine, we, we, we beat Sydney at home 5-0 and, and looked like we were going to go and, and run away with the championship. But, um, you know, that season turned on its head and we, we ended up finishing second last. Um, but then it was the year after. It was, it was when, you know, we made the move to Telstra Dome and at the time it was Telstra Dome, um, which, again, I was a bit apprehensive about and thought we're not going to be able to feel this. And, you know, sure enough, the next thing we're playing in front of 40, 45,000 and, and the place was absolutely rocking and, you know, to be able to do that in your hometown, um, in front of your family and friends every week was, was something I never, ever, ever thought would be possible in this country. And, um, you know, pretty special times. Yeah, it was pretty incredible, like 55,000 people at that 2007 uh, grand final. Well, it must have been amazing being out there uh, at that time. And then it must have given you a good experience and confidence for when you ended up making the move over to, uh, to Fulham, who were in, at the time in the Premier League. Yeah, it actually, in, in some ways, it made it harder because I, I was used to playing in front of 50,000 people. And then, oh. you know, as a, I think I was 21 when I left, I, I got there and, um, you know, I was into the reserve team and I was playing in front of 200 people. Yeah. Um, and I found that really challenging because I was the type of player that needed that, you know, that energy around me. And, and, and I'd always live for the bigger occasions and the bigger games. And, you know, I look back at my career and my best games were the big ones. Um, so, you know, going to, to England and playing on a, on a Wednesday night with, uh, you know, temporary flood, floodlights and on the training pitch was, was tough. Um, but, you know, that experience as well as, as of being at Fulham and then being at Norwich, um, you know, I learned a hell of a lot there in terms of football and the training required and the standards required to, you know, have a long career. And I think that, that probably helped me sort of towards the back end of my career. Mate, then you, you had a stint in um in, in Asia as well. Sue on there. There's a photo of you just joining the, the mob there. Um contrast your experiences or contrast the football that you experienced in, in, in Europe to that of Asia. I mean, obviously we, we we would imagine it's 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 completely different. 
But, um, on, you know, levels of professionalism, the crowd interaction, all of that. How, how did you um, see the two kind of experiences in your eyes? Yeah, I mean, you know, Europe's Europe. Europe's, Europe's just a different level. And even now I, I sort of sit here and I'm working in football and and I just sometimes think, gee, how good would it be if, if we had that on our doorstep? Um, but, y- you know, I went, I left Melbourne Victory 2014 when we were on the verge of winning the championship and I knew we were going to win it, but I had an offer to go to China, which I just couldn't refuse and, and I, it, it broke my heart to leave. But, um, you know, I did, did what I had to do for my family at the time and, um, the professionalism is even going from, from, you know, Melbourne Victory where, you know, it's an elite club and elite environment, um, elite coaching and, you know, tactically we were under Ange and, and then Muskie, um, you know, two of the best coaches I've played under, um, going to China was, it was like going back 15 years. Um, <laughs> and, and that's, that's no disrespect to them, but the, the, the facilities and everything just weren't to the standard that, that they should have been, especially with the amount of money that was going around in the league at the time. Um, fast forward 12 months and, and, and my contract in, in China ended and I, I was presented an opportunity to go to Korea. And that was, you know, it was a point in my career where I was ready for that. I was, I was ready for a different experience, but an incredible experience and, and, a, and a moment of my life that I, I really appreciate. And our family had an amazing time there. We, we, um, we live not far out of Seoul. We love the food. We love the people. Um, the football was very, very tough. Um, the preseason was very tough, and it was tough on our family. But you know, I look back and, and and I really value that time, particularly in South Korea. It was just such an amazing place to live. Oh wow! Um, and what about your memories, uh, Adrian, from your time with the, the national team squads? You're involved in the national team at all age groups, up to uh, even up to the Socceroos, where you've got yourself a Socceroos cap and you were even uh, picked by by Aussie Goose to uh, train with the squad as well before 2006, but also uh, 2008 Olympics as well? Yeah. Um, look, I, I think, you know, everyone has a bit of a journey and I suppose for me, the, the under-17s, um, you know, I had to fight pretty hard to get into that team and, and mm. ended up going away and, and, and playing every game and, and doing quite well and that's probably... You know, off the back of that, I signed at, at Melbourne Knights and probably made a little bit of a, a name for myself. Um, you know, and then I think we had the under twenties in in Holland. Um, again, amazing experiences and, and 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 you know things you do and places you go and teams you play against, players you play against that you just you wouldn't have dreamed of. And um, you know, and then the Beijing two thousand eight was again an incredible experience. And I think for me. Unfortunately, at the at the games, I I was replaced by Jade North as he was an overage player, um, mm. which which gutted me. But um, you know, I played in every single qualifier and got us there. Um, and that was countries like Jordan, North Korea, um, Lebanon, um, just places you'd never even go. And 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 some of the memories and you know, it, it's everyone thinks you beat you're this footballer, and it's all. You know easy and perfect but it was bloody yeah. hard and yeah. and um you know we had to we had to work hard i'd often fly back from the uk to these sorts of countries or back to australia and, and play the next day and um you know really really good experiences but but a lot of hard work yeah now you were a fan favorite um um at the victory um, there's a photo of that? you. <laughs> well, there's a photo. Of, well, certainly amongst the younger, younger crew, that's for sure. There's a, there's a good photo there of you. It must have been a, a, a clinic or something like that. In fact, that's probably in Geelong. I can see the K Rock van there. in the back in the background there. Um, and that, I guess, that that set you up well for for a life post football, where you're now um, coaching the kids. Mate, is that something that even before you finished uh, your football career, is that something that you kind of knew that was the direction you wanted to go um, because you now are the, the franchise uh, franchisee of Curva Coaching here in Geelong? Or is that something that happened a little bit later on after you finished and you sort of started getting itchy feet and wanted to get back involved in, uh, in, in football? T- talk us through that process. To be completely honest, it was my daughter that made me do it. Um, oh, it's the kids, isn't it? They, they're the ones the to kids. blame always. Yep. <laughs> so, so initially, when I got out of football, I just wanted a break. I was like, I just need some time, just away from it. Um, and then, 
my daughter, she, she, I'd always sort of try and get her involved or want to have a kick or whatever. She wasn't interested. And one day out of the blue, she said, Dad, I want to play football, but you have to be my coach. Um, and I said, right, let's do it. So I, I literally rang um, the ex-Surf Coast president, I think on the way home in the car, and said, I'm going to start a team. What do I have to do? Um, before we knew it, we had sort of six or seven of, of her schoolmates signed up, and, and that's grown to, to now. I think there's about, I think there's 24 under 9 yeah. girls. And yep. I reckon 19 have come from her sort of school immediate school group um so that's like it's it's just the best thing ever you know what it's like tonchi coaching your kids and being around the environment it's it's absolutely mate i've got a ever. very very similar experience now i haven't represented the soccerers and i haven't been played in europe and south korea but i had a break of about 10 years running my own business and this and that and not being involved with soccer and it was exactly like that through my own daughter and and it's funny I mean, I don't want to talk about myself too much. We're talking about you, Ada. But it was purely mis- by mistake. We wanted to get her involved. She's about three or four at the time. And you quickly got that itch to get back involved. And one thing led to another. Started working for Football Victoria. Started coaching. Started, and look at this. Now we're running a podcast, Steve and I. But it's it's amazing how <laughs> things happen. happen. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it, exactly. It's, it's amazing how things sort of accidentally fall into place. But, you know, you've got a, a curve of coaching uh, – um, uh, school now or franchise tell us how, how that's come about yeah so again as you just said with your story mine's really similar um, I basically had a, had a few friends sort of reach out and say are you doing any sort of one-on-one coaching would you do any extra coaching and things like that and and through my work with Adidas I work in sports marketing with Adidas um, we're a global partner with Curver and I actually you know, do all the product ordering for, for the brand. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just got chatting to, to Jason, who's the, the Asia Pacific um, director. And I said, like, what do you reckon? Do you reckon I could do one of these down my way? And um, one thing led to another. And, and before I, I knew it, I was up in Canberra doing all the training and, um, you know, preparing to go on this little journey. And it's, um, I love it. It's, it's a, it's a really good program and probably the only one that I'd ever that I wanted to get involved with because I think it's really genuine. Um, and yeah, we, we, we started in, in term one this year. We've got quite a few kids coming through it now and, um, and hopefully we'll continue to grow. Adrian, what do you think is the understanding of COVID coaching across the football community in Australia with uh, parents and kids? Do you think it's something that is as well known or well renowned as it should be in Australia? Are people um, familiar with it or are they still, uh, is it still something they think is from left field a little bit? Yeah, look, I think if you know football, you know it, definitely. Um, it's uh, And that's, I suppose, especially where I'm running it down the surf coast where football, you wouldn't say, is the number one sport. Yeah. But it's, um, you know, for me growing up, it was it was massive, especially in that sort of, that era of, of, of my time. Um, and that's one of the other reasons why I want to do it, because I know if I did it, I'd be, I would have been a heaps better player. Um, technically, I was quite poor, um, as some of those fans might say, Tonchi, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, we loved it because you were uh, one of we've our got your own. biggest we've got your biggest fan in the comments, Santino, Look, and his uh, his oh, pump yeah. that you're on the show. Oh, yeah, good. Look, I gave away everything, and that's all we can ask for. But I think, to be brutally brutally honest, and Stephen Lustiger will, will back this up by doing this sort of program. Technically, you you become a much better player, and um, and that's part of the reason why I thought, you know what, this is perfect for the Geelong region. Um, mm-hmm. The kids will benefit from it. And it's 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 a love for me, and it's a passion for me, and, and hopefully I can turn it into a, you know, a, a nice little sort of movement down that way. When when I was working at Football Victoria and responsible for the Geelong region, along with Foddy Kipri, and big shout out to Foddy, who's like the godfather of of, of football here in Geelong. For, for, we we spoke with um, uh, I think he was then the the North Geelong Warriors technical director Igor Serbinovsky, who was looking at creating his own thing. And we said in Geelong, the big vacuum is that 9 to 13-year-olds to get their technical ability up to really, really improve them. Um, And that was, what, 2017, thereabouts, 2018. Fast forward four years, and we've got a lot of those academies now popping up because there was always that appetite. And I I I know quite a fair few people who are willing to take their kids all the way down to Melbourne, one-on-one coaching, um, um, you know, specialist coaching, and it's all got to do with that technical element. We just don't seem to have or haven't had that level of coaching. 
And look, I know speaking to Stephen um, off camera, he used to say growing up in Canberra, um, they weren't able to do a lot of things in training. So a lot of the technical side, because you, know, you do a drill and play a game and that's about it, or you've got a, you know, a volunteer dad looking after the kids. Some of this specialist coaching was oh so important in the development of, of technical skills and in his case as well. So, And we've got Stephen coming up. He can tell you all himself, his own experiences. But are you starting to see, even the short time that you've been here, the level of skill in, in a lot of your students, a lot of your pupils, the technical skill, just improving out of sight because they're focusing on that? Yeah, heaps. And I think there's a there is a little bit of a, you know, misconception as well that it's all, you know, you with the ball and trying to do tricks and things like that. But it's it's not about that. The the, the program has evolved a lot. Um, a lot of one v one, a lot of two v two. Yeah. The way the way the way I try to explain it is the way that the sessions are set up is for the for the kids to explore and learn themselves in certain situations. So, you know, it's a lot of multi goal. It's a lot, you know, getting their head up, changing direction, doing it naturally, and 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 that's that's all they need. They just need to learn naturally, and they need to spend time on the pitch and. Like I've got some girls in our group who I just I just love watching them play. Um, you know, one of them the other day did a double step over against me and beat me and just ran straight past me and it was <laughs> like the best thing ever. I just wanted to stop and stuff. Like <laughs> um, but and, and then and then even you know like I've done a, I've done a group on a Wednesday night, mainly Surf Coast kids and, and and some of them I've just seen an incredible amount of improvement in them because I feel like they haven't had that sort of coaching mm-hmm. um, for a long time and. It's it's um it's exciting and it's it's nice to to see that improvement. And you get a, as you'd know, Tonch, you get an immense amount of satisfaction when you see it in the kids and see how, how happy they are. And you know, I run a three to six program too, and it's not all about this whole technical improvement. It's just about getting a ball at your feet, fun. having mm-hmm. fun, and um, creating a good environment. And that's all it is. Well, now, uh, Adrian, since you finished playing, uh, finished up at Dandy City there in that team that was a bit of an A League All Stars with, uh, I think you had Santa Lab and, and Cal Valeri. And I'm not sure if Mate Duganzic had finished up at Dandy City by that time or not, but certainly some big names in, the, in that squad. Um, you, you wrapped up playing football, but then you, I'm hearing you have had a run with some old fellas uh, this uh, summer, maybe once or twice. And uh, did you pull out any of these skills uh, playing reportedly as a midfielder in the Masters Summer League? Well, I told him I wasn't going anywhere near the back line. Uh, <laughs> I, I actually, I actually ended up my first game. Actually, I think it was about thirty-five degrees, and I ended up in yep. the in the forward line. We were two all with I think the team that finished top. I got played in one on one with by my brother. Um, one on one with a keeper, and I put it wide. So um, I sort of haven't lived that one down, and didn't go up front again. But oh, look, it was more some of my brother's mates from school that put together this group, and um, just you know a lot of old fellows who. To be honest, it was more about the beer afterwards, um, <laughs> and, and the team. The team was pretty relaxed. We didn't really fight for too much. We won one game, and uh, as you said, I only played two, so it's <laughs> pretty short lived. <laughs> I, I might put the boots on again next year. Well, if you have no idea what Ado and Steve are talking about, the Master Summer League, which is now finished, it was an absolute brilliant concept. And uh, go back into our YouTube channel. We mentioned our YouTube channel. It was episode two. Or episode 74, we had um, a guy from Brewery Colo there, Chiller from Brewery Colo. He was the sponsor um, telling us all about the uh, the beer, the famous beer after the games. And uh, we also had Simon Blanche and Ross Abraham from the organisers as well. So, look, um, fantastic. Um, we're talking with Adrian Leia about Curva Coaching. And, Adrian, there's a clinic coming up um, after Easter. We'll talk a little bit about that. And we'll also talk about your special guest that you've got um, um, helping you out on that clinic, um, Stephen Lustitzer, who is currently with uh, Western United and doing really well. But we're going to take a little bit of a break, and when we return, we're going to continue this uh, this uh, riveting conversation. Thank you with um, Adrian Leia.
Well, back on the Geelong Region Soccer Show, we will be going a little bit over time, I think, tonight, Steve. We've had such a great conversation here, and we still haven't got our next guest yet. But, um, Adrian, before we go any further, uh, tell us all about the clinic, the um, school holiday clinic that is coming up um, next week, I think it is. Yeah, so it's in the second half of, of, of the Easter holidays. Um, we're running it out of Geelong College Middle School, which is awesome. It's a... You know, I walk onto their their pitches, and it just reminds me of the, you know, the good old days and the, the nice clean cut grass. So um, we're, mm. we're doing a three to six year old clinic from from nine till ten each day, and then the mm -hmm. I suppose the main clinic um, between ten thirty and one thirty each day. Um, we will have a half an hour lunch break in between on the on the with the main clinic. Um, yep. And that's where you know the likes of Stephen Mustika, um, Amy Amy Jackson, who's a who's who's just won her. Yeah, Second, she's a star, a, superstar. Yeah, superstar. Oh, wow. So yep. she, she's 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 going to be one of our specialist coaches for the whole three days. Um, oh wow! So yeah, there's a good little good little group there. We got. I'm really mindful about the coaches we bring in, and um, you know we should we should put on a great clinic for the kids. Oh, that is that is awesome. So there you go. It's um, on April 20, which is next Wednesday, April 20, 21, and 22. So parents, if you want to have your kids, if they're bored by, by week two of the school holidays, they're going to be absolutely bored. They'll be jumping off walls. They'll be looking to burn some extra energy if they're aged between three and six. Yeah, there you go, between nine and ten o'clock. What a, what a great time that is. Get them up nice and early. Um, they'll be running around. They'll be ready for an afternoon nap after that, I think, Ado. And, <laughs> and then um, the seven to 16-year-olds from 10.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m., there's all the details, www.curva.com.au. The email address is geelong at curva.com.au. And the phone number is 0423 975 569. Um, all the details are there. Uh, now, we're hoping to get Stephen Lushtitzer on. If he's around, He's uh, we're still waiting for him to get into the green room. He uh, seems to be having some problems with his uh, camera at the moment, but as soon as we get him on board, we're going to 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 uh, have a chat with uh, Stephen. Adrian, how did you get how did you get Stephen and Amy and some of these other guys onto your show? Onto your yeah, I've, show, but... yeah. So I, I will just say, um, Tonch, the the seven to sixteen year old group is probably there's probably. I'd say there'd be lucky to be ten spots left. I've capped it wow. um, to, to make sure it's, you, you know, reasonably, um, you know, small. Um, and yeah. so I just don't want people to be disappointed. But there's there's quite a few spots left for the three to six year olds. So, um, in terms of getting Amy and 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 uh, Stephen on board, um, I actually, you know, playing with Melbourne Victory, and obviously Amy's done really well there, and and, and I see her as a, I suppose, a legend of the club. Um, you know, back-to-back -back championships and and, and, a, and a long history of the club. Um, so I had a friendship with her from my days at Melbourne Victory, but also it was funny. She played in, in South Korea while I was there, and um, I think she actually came over to our place for dinner one night and um, used to catch up and share our uh, our South Korean stories, which you need to do when you when you live over there. <laughs> yeah. So um, yeah. it's uh, – look, it's – and then, you know, obviously Stephen just through, through playing against him, um, you know – I do look after him with, with his uh, with that Adidas boots, um, you know, for, for for use in the A League. So um, I, I do have a relationship with him from that too. So it's all just just worked out nicely. And I think I think it's great for the kids. It gives the kids. I, I remember when I was a kid, and you got I had NSL players coming to town, and I didn't know who they were, but I was like, oh, he's an NSL player. This is the best thing ever. Get an autograph yeah. and a photo, and and, it, and it, it inspires you to go and do something. So it's yeah. um, it's good for the kids. All right. Well, we, we've we've got um Stephen Lustitzer, who is uh he's a bona fide um superstar himself. He plays for Western United, and it is an absolute pleasure to have Stephen on the uh, Geelong Region Soccer Show. He's making his debut on the Geelong Region Soccer Show. Stephen, a uh, very warm welcome to you, and, and thank you for being a part of our show tonight. No worries, guys. Thanks for having me on. It's a pleasure. Uh, thanks for coming on, Steve. Well, let's go straight into talking about call for coaching. And you are a youngster, a little little uh knee high to a grasshopper footballer running around in Canberra. What are your memories of uh, learning core of a coaching skills uh, from a young age? 
Yeah, look, obviously, um, I went through the program. Um, I think it was about maybe 10 or 11 years old when I started it. Um, and it was pretty... Um, I was obviously grew up in Canberra and did all my junior football there. And, mm-hmm. you know, at that time when I was going growing up and, and, and started to play football, there was really no no real, you know, other than our club training. And, you know, luckily I had my father as well that played the game and he sort of, you know, taught me a lot. But other than, you know, your sort of club training, there was nothing really... It was out there, and then Curva came along in Canberra, um, and really that was, you know, taught me a lot to be honest. If it wasn't for Curva, um, I mean, there was no real other, other than you know my father teaching me football. There was there was nothing else out there, and to be honest, Curva was a massive part of my development. Now, Stephen, th- speaking of your father, who I know very well personally, a big shout out to Bernie. Um, he's managed to uh, find some uh, photos of you from your younger years. And uh, he tells me you were about aged eleven at the time. Well, what a yeah. cute little photo there is. You there? <laughs> what was yeah. that? What was the, what was that? At? Like, there's a big obviously. Um, you've you got the Australian kit on there, and um, there's some uh, kids there that are definitely a lot taller than you. They probably would have been twelve or thirteen. <laughs> so, um, tell us, was that was that an overseas trip that you were involved in as part of the Curva Curva Academy? Yeah, that, that picture on the left um, in that trophy room, that was in Barcelona. So we went on an overseas trip to Barcelona. I'm pretty sure that was in uh, at the new camp, that, that photo. 100% yeah. that one was at the new camp. Um, yep. So, yeah, there was a lot of overseas trips that we went on. Um, we went on, I think, on that tour, we went to Barcelona, France. There was another tour, we went to America and, and Canada. Um, that photo on the right there, where we're in the Australian gear, that was, um, that was I think that was on the Gold Coast. Um, that was in January. They used to have every January, there was like... All the different curva from all around Australia will come together and do a, do a camp, and then players will be selected to go on, go on the tours. So, so that was um, on the Gold Coast that picture there. So, yeah, look, like I said, um, curva was was a massive part of my development, and you know, I learned I, I learned all my you know all all my skills through curva, all my technique, all the ball masteries, um, juggling, you know, just touches on the ball, technique, being comfortable on the ball. Um, it was all through the curva program. Now, uh, Steve, your your technical skills were uh, so good that you you ended up uh, going and representing one of the top clubs in the one of the most one of the more technical leagues in Europe, and that's uh, Tonchi's favourite team, Hajduk Split. Oh yes. Um, and you made your debut against uh, Barcelona. Do you want to tell us a bit more about your memories from Hajduk Split and that particular night as well? Yeah. Look, um, obviously, yeah, that was an unbelievable night. Um, you know, I went overseas. I think I was, I was 19, 20 years old when I signed in Croatia for Hajduk Split. Um, and growing up, that was you know a team that I've always supported. Um, you know, got got a family background there. Um, you know, my um, a former a cousin of mine was a club legend there. Um, so there's there's a bit of history there with, with with my surname. So growing up, it was always the, the club that I supported. So you know, going there to be able to play and, and sign for them at such a young age was obviously a dream come true for me. And and then to make my debut against Barcelona was, was incredible as well. So um, you know, it was it was an incredible time and something that I'll never forget. Now, talking about the European trip, um, we, we spoke to Adrian just about his own experiences in Europe and in Asia. And there's obviously so many things like cultural differences you have to overcome, you know, being away from home and all of that kind of stuff. But I guess one of the things when you're moving to another country, particularly somewhere like Europe, is you've got to get used to the technical superiority of a lot of the players that have been playing and training since they've been since they've been, you know, not knee high to a grasshopper, and they obviously in Europe they train five days a week, six days a week, and what you're not. How important was it for you to have that background in the technical um, learning, the the development that Curva provided you when you went overseas to Europe? Yeah, definitely. Look, you know, what helped me a lot was, like I said, we went on a lot of overseas overseas tours as well with Curva, so. You know, when we went to Barcelona, we played against Barcelona under 13s, under 14s, and you know we, we really got a good indication where we were at when we played them. I remember we uh, played, I think in my own age group, we lost like eight nil, and then I played mm-hmm. played for the age group up, we lost like sixteen nil. It was crazy, um, just to see the the, the the level, you know, and that obviously helped. You know, when, when you came back to Australia, you realised like how far you were, how far away you are um, to to reach that level. So. Um, those experiences through Curva coaching and you know just all those years of of, of following a program 
and, and and a lot of it was um, going home, and there was a lot of homework involved with Kerber as well. It wasn't just turning up to the training sessions and, and doing the you know two three times a week training. There was a lot of um, homework involved there as well. We had our own diary, and we, you know we had to do you know certain targets every day. We had to practice our skills, juggling. We had to get records. So and we always had to hand, hand in our diaries at the end of the week. Um, so there was a lot of. You know, obviously, we, we, we did the sessions um, with our squad with Kerber, but then in your own time, it was how much time you put in as well, um, away from the sessions that, that really you benefit, benefit from as well. Um, and yeah, again, those uh, touching on those skills that you developed from that, that technique and I guess those hours and rep, repetition and that sort of thing as well, it's given you that, uh, that skill base to be, to be the great player that you've uh, become and a great technical player. How do you find it in terms of the versatility that that enables you, like particularly with your current club, West United, where you're able to play in that midfield role as potentially a 6, 8 or a 10? Does, do you think Corvo is something that gives players a lot of versatility? Hundred percent. You know, ultimately, it, 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 it allows you to become comfortable with the ball. Um, and if you're comfortable on the ball and with the ball and your technique's good, you can you can obviously play in a lot of different roles. Um, so you know, if your technique's limited and your skills are limited, then obviously you can have limited, um, you know, ability on the field, and and you know you'll be restricted as well. So what Kerber does allow you to do is, obviously, you know, um, you know, it gives you that ability to obviously you know be able to be adaptable and most of all be comfortable comfortable in all in all situations so that's definitely that something that helped me um, along my journey was mm-hmm. to be comfortable on the ball and, and have that you know confidence to be able to you know receive the ball um, you know be under pressure a lot of 1v1s 2v2s um, like Ado touched on before it's a lot of those small sided games that Kerber concentrated on um, especially when I was doing it as well there's a lot of 1v1s 2v2s small sided games um so, in, you know, in those restricted areas, um, allows you to become comfortable. Guys, um, I guess it's past nine o'clock, so most school kids would be in bed by now. But it is the school holiday, so no doubt we've got a lot of kids uh, tuning in. Ado, Ado, first of all to you, if you had to give these young kids here in Geelong um, and, and wherever else they're listening in, um, a, a word of advice as to... If they wanted to become a professional footballer, what are some of the things they would have to do or not do um, in your eyes from your own experiences? Yeah, look, I think from my experience, I suppose I, I was a lot different player to, to Stephen. Um, you know, I was a centre back and, um, you know, very different type of player. But for me, I had to make a heap of sacrifices. I had to, I had to do everything right off the pitch um, to give myself a chance on the pitch. And, um, you know, that started from the age of 13, 14, 15. I remember rocking up to games in Geelong and boys, my teammates had been you know, out the night before or, mm-hmm. you know, laughing about the parties and chasing girls and all that sort of thing. And and I always, you know, I, I would have had a, my same pre-match meal. I would have gone a bit earlier, would have done all those things. And, yeah, it's, it sounds pretty boring, but it's just what you have to do to, to have half a chance. And um, the ones that are prepared to do it are the ones that, you know, more more likely than not to, to actually achieve something. Steve, what about yourself? Um, um, we've heard from Adrian how he talks about sacrifices that have to be made. Um, what You know, you went overseas at a really young age, um, broke into a, a, a top European side at the age of 19. So what, what did you have to do um, what, or what would be your words of advice for any budding young professionals or wannabe professionals? Yeah, 100%, like Ada just touched on, for me as well, it was always about discipline, dedication, professionalism, and, you know, to this day as well, I'm very, very strict with that as well. I mean, you know, there's obviously the technical side and all that, but, you know, if you don't have the other side, whereas you've got to be disciplined, you've got to be professional, you've got to look after your body, um, all that kind of stuff, you know, you you, you won't be able to um, sustain a career in football, um, especially the way the game's going at the moment. So, you know, for me, obviously, you know, going to Europe at a young age, and even, even now, you know, playing in the A-League, you still got to, you know, be on top of that. You know, for me, what I do off the field and away from training is, is just as important as what I do, you know, when I turn up to training and the games because, you know, without that, you, you won't be able to sustain that level and compete at that level. 
Fantastic, guys. Um, Steve, you wanted to say something. I almost cut you off. Uh, I'll jump in with yeah, one more question. I guess we're nearly yep. out of time. So thank you both for your time, Adrian and Steve. Um, how's the rest of the season looking at Western United, Steve? Obviously, you've finished up your games in Victoria and you're on the road to Tassie to play in Lonnie for a couple of games, then a couple of more interstate trips as well for away matches. Uh, we hope we'll see you back in uh, in Melbourne playing uh, playing a home final after all of that. But uh, how's it all shaping up with those upcoming fixtures uh, starting against uh, Perth there, as we see on the screen now? Yeah, we're obviously travelling to Tasmania now. We, we're going to be there for a week. We've got two games there. And, yeah, look, there's five games left. You know, we're still in a really good position. You know, we, we've done really well this season. And obviously now, you know, it's coming to the, to the end of the season. And, you know, we want to obviously... Um, Finish strongly, you know, every game's important now. You see how close Melbourne City, um, you know, even victory now is coming strong. Melbourne City, they're a quality team, you know. So it's so close to the league, so close to so many um, good teams. Every game's hard in this league, you know, there's no easy game. So, you know, we've really had to stay focused every game to to, 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 to sort of stay at the top there. Um, otherwise, you sort of fall back pretty quickly with a few few bad results in the A-League. You, you suddenly go down the table. So, yeah, look, we're obviously looking forward to our trip to Tasmania. Um, we've got two hard games there. And then, you know, I think we've got a trip away to New South Wales. We've got a few games there as well. And then before you know it, um, the finals will be there. So, look, we're obviously taking it game by game and definitely going to be ready for, for, for the game against Perth. Oh, gentlemen, thank you so much for being a part of tonight's show. It's, it's the, the pearls of wisdom um, that we were, you're able to share with a lot of um, our Geelong-based uh, younger players, and we do have some quality, quality juniors coming through the ranks. And um, one of those I saw in action on the weekend, 16-year-old Noah Skoko, son of Josip Skoko, playing for North Geelong in the senior team. He's a, he's a kid with a lot of potential, and there's quite a fair few of those kids as well in action. So uh, uh, that's the um, the holiday camp there. Once again, April 20, 21st and 22nd. That's next Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Lots of room for the age three to six group. Um, that's from 9am till 10am. And then we've got the um, sevens to 16s. They're going to be from 10.30 to 1.30. They're at Geelong College. Absolutely beautiful grounds there. And um, we look forward to uh, hearing some good reports coming from that. Um, Stephen, wishing you all the very best with, with Western United. And once again, thank you so, so much for uh, for uh, coming on the Geelong Region Soccer Show. And um, Adrian, all the very best with your new venture, Curva Coaching. And uh, hopefully we'll um, we'll see it expand and grow and, um, and, and be here for many, many years to come. Thanks, gents. Thanks for having me on. And uh, I might send Stephen you top. We can't have that top on here anymore. <laughs> I didn't plan it out very well, did I? It was pretty. No, cool. no, no. It's, it's been hurt me for an hour, so I needed to say something. We are looking for apparel <laughs> sponsors, actually. So, uh, well, you know, Adidas probably would would sit look a lot better on on Steve there. <laughs> Ado, thank you so much, Steve. Thank you so much, and I uh, wish you all the very best for the uh, for for, for see, the foreseeable future. Thanks, guys. No worries. Thanks, guys. Good day. Oh, mate, you've gone a bit red there, Steve. Yeah, I was, yeah, <laughs> Barrett, I was you know. He's, he's an added man uh, through and through. You know, just been for my run and jumped out of the shower, jumped in yeah. time for the show and didn't <laughs> didn't plan it out very well. I know Ado is a brand ambassador for Adidas, so I really didn't plan it out very well. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's okay. All good, mate. All good. You know, I'm the same with our sister shows. Speaking of which, one of those, the Oz Crow Soccer Show, coming up this weekend, this Wednesday night, in fact, and we will be talking about Ado's old club, the Melbourne Knights. Josip Simonich is in town, and um, we will have a representative from the Melbourne Knights talking about um, a lot of youth youth um, movement in the youth area as well, youth development, youth identification as well. So uh, that's going to be huge. Wednesday night, 8.30 p.m. Uh, the Football Out West Show will be taking a break this Sunday because it's Easter Sunday, and we will be taking a break, of course, as well. Steve, because um, next week, Easter Monday, we're both going to have a well-deserved sort of a mid-season break after six <laughs> after six absolutely. weeks. Huh? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> the back-to-back month, the back-to-back um, Sunday, Monday nights. It's a bit like playing uh, a midweek game in the Champions League every week, pretty yeah, much. Right? Take, so take, you're going to be tired. So good to have no. a, a week off, and you'll appreciate us even more when you come back because you won't be sick of us seeing us on two yeah. nights in a row every week. So absolutely, everyone's a winner there, I think, Tosh. 
Good on you. Um, um, once again, um, got, thank you, folks, for being a part of tonight's show. Thank you to our guests, and thank you certainly to Curva Coaching Geelong. They are the episode sponsor of, of tonight. Uh, in two weeks' time, Mist Heating and Cooling. They are our episode sponsors, and they have nominated North Geelong Warriors. So we will be focusing on the North Geelong Warriors. But in the meantime, look, if you if you appreciate what we're trying to do and we're doing our darndest, we're doing our best, and, you know, um, we do need to, to get some new clothes and kit, kit, kit um, Steve there. So become a member of the Geelong Region yeah. Soccer Show. Yeah, we need to get a uniform. So We, we do. Show your support. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. any uniform clashes anymore yeah and um sign up as a member there it is go to Patre- uh, www.patreon.com forward slash geelong region soccer show that's www.patreon.com forward slash geelong region soccer show one of the benefits of being a member or in fact a sponsor or advertiser of the geelong region soccer, sh- soccer show is that every weekday you are actually sent in your email inbox uh, the Geelong Daily Football News Bulletin, exclusively written for our members, subscribers, and uh, sponsors. And that is originally produced news articles about the Geelong football scene. And there is so much going on every day, every week. Um, so, you know, those people, they get something that the rest of you don't. So you don't want to be left out. Join up and sign up at www.patreon.com forward slash Geelong Region Soccer Show. Mate, that brings us to the end of our show. Thank you very much to everyone once again for being a part of tonight's show. Steve, happy very a very happy Easter to you. And yourself and to everyone who tunes in every week, wishing you a very happy Easter and hope you can enjoy uh, a bit of a break or if not, uh, just get down to a local ground because the games, as we said earlier, they're still on this weekend. And we've just f- found out that the Geelong Soccer Club's to, uh, game this week. I can't remember who it's against. Uh, uh, Whittlesea. Whittlesea United. Uh, Whittlesea Rangers. Sorry, Whittlesea Rangers. Rangers. That's yes. right. That is going to be televised or broadcast um, live on the um, NPL TV, the Clutch TV app, um, which is also, I think, on YouTube. I'm not too sure. but Not on YouTube anymore. So you will, on, need, you will need you will to need download, to download the, uh, the NPL.TV app on your, on your phone or um, it's get free. a login on a PC. It's free. Yep. You can uh, do it right now. And uh, you'll just need to navigate down to Football Victoria and find the NPL3 section. Don't go to NPL. Go to NPL3 and you'll find it there. And you can watch the game. And who knows who could be commentating. You never know. You never, never know. Probably one of us. Who knows? Because we are Geelong based. Um, and if you want to know more information about that, the Geelong Daily Football News Bulletin will surely have that information. Folks, we've spoken too much. It's time for yep. us to go. Good night. Have a happy Easter and get out to a game this weekend if you can. Good night. Good night. Good night.